I want to welcome you to the Prodigal Son Podcast. You know, I spent the biggest part of my life thinking God was just mad at me, just ticked, and found out in my mid-40s that that was a religious lie that nobody needed to ever believe. I thank God that for for the last five, six years that I have known and understood that that I can count on him like a trusted friend. That's the reason we do this podcast six days a week. I record five of these podcasts, and, and then I put my pastor's message on Sunday on this podcast for people to grow and be strengthened and, and come to realize that God's a good God. He's not out to hurt anybody, but he wants to, to, to see us come to him to love us and to care for us. Oh, I thank God for that. Now, I, I, I want you to understand something. This podcast is, is put out in a lot of different avenues and a lot of different ways. Uh, we, it's shared over all kinds of different platforms. But I want to ask you, I, I want to ask you to share these podcasts on your social media, if you if you uh, if you listen to this podcast, put it on your Facebook account, Instagram, whatever you whatever you whatever social media platform you use, share these. Help us get the word out that that the Lord's a good God, and He wants more than anything to be part of every person on this planet's life. He wants to love us and care for us and minister us minister to us through his word and and that's what that's what this podcast is all about to teach people and and help them to understand and to know that they can count on God's word as much as they can count on the word of a trusted friend more they can count on him more oh i thank god for that truth today share these podcasts on your social media I want to take just a minute and thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us put this put this podcast on on the internet six days a week, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, to give his word away free of charge. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over every partner of this ministry. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Now listen, I, I want to emphasize this. This podcast is free. It's been given to you free of charge. Now give it away. Encourage others to find out what God's Word says to them, for them, and about them. My prayers for the world that we live in comes out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, Paul desired that their eyes be open to God's love, and, and that's my desire for the world that I live in today, that they would come to understand and to know just how much God loves them. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I'm not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. 
Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God for Him opening my eyes to His love. And I pray that you allow Him to open yours. Oh, I thank God for that wisdom, that understanding that He has given me through the truth in His Word. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your Word. Touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel that you can shine through. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing in this podcast. Guide and direct in each and every heart that listens to this podcast. Touch them in a mighty way. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. You know, yesterday we started out talking about Joseph. And and I want to go on and, and, and continue to talk about Joseph today because this is a this is a, a a picture of a man that had faith regardless and and I just I want to read this this scripture uh, it's the 37th verse and the 19th I'm sorry Genesis 37 chapter 37 and the 19th verse and they said one to another behold this dreamer cometh now, Joseph, like I said, Joseph had faith regardless. But I want to ask you something. Can you imagine? Can you imagine your entire, every brother and sisters? I don't have any children. I don't have any siblings. I, I'm the only child. And, and I don't know what it's like to have brothers and sisters. But I've got friends. I've got family. And I can't imagine everyone in my life turning against me. I'm talking about every person except his his father, you know, and he's um, obviously his mother. But but his entire family was looking at him like he had done something wrong, just because he was the the favorite, and he was, and his and Jacob you know, made it clear that he was. But I can't imagine having 10 or 11 brothers. I don't know if Benjamin was was uh, born yet, but Benjamin was his full brother. And But the, all the rest of them just looked at him. And, I mean, they set out. All, most of them were wanting to kill him because of... The dream that he had, and because of the of the uh, the the tunic that that his father had had him had him made, and it, it it's a sad story when you look at it from from that perspective, from that angle. Like you've got you've got ten brothers that despise you, and only one of them had enough had enough uh, mercy on him not to want to kill him, just to to get him out of the way. And that was Reuben. But like I said yesterday, it would do you, uh, oh, it was, it's, a, it's a great story. Start in chapter 37 and, 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 and go through chapter 50 and, and hear and understand how that, how that Joseph just, I mean, he stood in faith. <laughs> he had faith regardless of what happened. Over and over again, you know, I was reading it yesterday, and uh, the thirty-eighth chapter is is not about Joseph, and I, I don't I don't know 
you know, the the Lord knows why he stuck that that chapter in there in the middle of it. But uh, you can you can read through the the thirty ninth chapter and see that my goodness, Joseph didn't even speak, didn't even say anything until Potiphar's wife approached him. You know, through all this through all this turmoil and through all this mistreatment, Joseph didn't even speak until till Potiphar's wife approached him to commit adultery with her. And it's amazing at the strength and the wisdom. You know, you you look at the position that that Joseph was in in the 39th chapter when he he when uh Potiphar's wife approached him you look at that position you think about it just think back you've had your 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 siblings sell you into slavery want to kill you but uh decide that wouldn't be a good thing but they they sell you into slavery and you're taken into to Egypt and sold to a man that uh you know just you're his slave. You're his. You're you're his property, and 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 you know you could come to a place in your life, and and you think, how did did Joseph see through all the the problems and the and the uh, turmoil and the anxiety and the stress and the all oh, just the the problems that was going on in his life? How did he see through and and see God? watching after him. You know, he could have easily said, forget this. You know, God is, you know, he's He's allowed me to be sold into slavery. He's He's caused me to be put into this man's house, and he just he just puts, you know, he the man was good to him, don't get me wrong, but he was his property. He had a job to fulfill, and he had to do it for this man. Didn't get paid anything for it. But, uh, uh, he could have very easily said, well, sure, why not? Why shouldn't I have have a, uh, an affair with this woman? I mean, I've been mistreated my entire life, and here I stand, a, a slave to another person. But did he? He didn't. He had faith in God. And, and it just, oh, it just winds me up to think of the, the strength that I draw from this story. Because because Joseph wasn't looking at his position. He was looking at the God that was guiding him and directing him and loving him and helping him. And down the road we see where he, he becomes only second to the to the uh, to the Pharaoh of Egypt. I mean he was he was the uh, Pharaoh was the only one that was higher than he was. And he was he was uh, appointed to that position. He wasn't born into that position. He didn't get elected to that position. He was appointed by Pharaoh himself to be put into that position to oversee the entire nation. And when he done that, when Pharaoh done that, he ensured that his nation would survive a, a awful famine. But... When I look at the situation that Joseph was in, I think to myself, you know, I want that kind of faith. I want that kind of strength and guidance and understanding. And I want to be able to, to see through all that the world throws, throws against me and, and, and be able to understand that God's got a purpose He's got a purpose for me, and it may be on the other side of this trial. It's it is on the other side of this trial, and I'm going to walk through this uh, through this trial with faith, regardless of what I see, what's coming against me. And and when we do that, when we when we step out into this world and and the situations that we've been put into, and when we step out into this into these problems that 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 stand against us and say, Lord, I'm not going to, I'm not going to waver one bit. I'm not going to get discouraged one bit. I'm going to walk and I'm going to do what you want me to do. And I'm going to depend on you to take care of me while I do it. You know, I've done that over the years 
the last five or six years, I mean, I've had to stand on what God wanted, you know, wanted for me because I didn't know the direction he wanted me to go. I honestly didn't. All I knew was that that God's word was the answer to what I needed to be doing. And here I sit today doing what God has called me to do, and that is to give his word away all over this world, to invite people, to urge people, to convince people that he's a good God, that he's for them, not against them, and to have faith in him regardless of what I see, the position that I'm in or may not be in. Oh, I thank God for his word, for his love and his mercy. And and when I read this story about Joseph, it 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 sets it, it gives me strength because I see a man that was in the same position that a lot of people in this world are in today. They now these the people in this world today look at the position they're in and think, how in the world am I going to come through this? And I'm sure Joseph looked at his position and thought, what am I going to do other than stand on God's word? And he did. And that's what I want to urge you today to do is, is, is believe it. You may be going through, you may be in a position right now and going through things that, that just really, honestly, you don't know which way to turn. Turn to God. You say, how do I do that? Turn to his word. Turn to his guidance. You know, I heard a man talking about it the other day. He said, you know, I begged God for for a long time. Talk to me, Lord. Show me, help me know what to do and how to do things and, and guide me and, 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 and uh, take me the place that you want me to be. And he said, the Lord spoke to my heart. And he said, son, I have written down in my word, the things that I want this world to know and do. And he said, when you can figure out what I've written down for you in that word, he said, maybe then I'll speak to you. He said, but until then, you get in my word and you consume it and you seek out my will in my word. And he said, I've done that. And 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 I know I know the man. I mean, it was he's been instrumental in teaching me how to stand and believe and 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 understand God's will for my life because God's will is His word, and we can stand on that like we can stand on the word of a trusted friend. Joseph did. Joseph stood. He stood. With faith, regardless, I want you to decide. I want you to understand and know that today. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care what's going on around you. I don't care what the devil and and everybody else that that's running with him, screaming in your ear. You stand on God's word. You believe God's word. You don't allow the 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 lies of this world to permeate your spirit, but you put God's word down into your heart and you you allow him, allow him to be what he wants to be in your life. And that's your Lord and your Savior. If you've never been born again, be born again today. You know, I, I do these podcasts and I never fail to give an invitation for people to be born again to be born into the family of God. You know, we look at Joseph and, and, and think, how in the world did he overcome what he overcame? I'll tell you how he done it. He had faith in God. He believed what God wanted for his life and that God would watch after him. You see, we live in a day that, that religion has clouded people's minds and people's uh, picture of God. Oh, so many of them think he's a tyrant, just a crazy old bipolar old man with a hammer in one hand, a lightning bolt in the other, just waiting for them to screw up. 
That ain't God. That's a picture that religion's painted of him, and it's a lie. The God that I serve, the God of this Bible that I read and cherish, is a God of mercy and love and grace. And, and, and he wants more than anything to come into your life and, and see you, see you overcome the way Joseph did with faith regardless. Oh, <laughs> where is that faith? Where what where did or what did uh, Joseph have faith in? He had faith in God, because obviously he is in a position he couldn't have faith in anything that he had done. Oh, I thank God for those truths. I pray today that you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, and have faith in what God done in Him and through Him. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. Be born again today. Allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and guide you through his precious Holy Spirit. And if you are born again, get in his word. Get in God's word and and seek his will out for your life because his will for you is in his word. He wants you to know that and understand that. Be born again today. Allow God to, oh, allow God to minister to you today through his word. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. I promise you, He'll change your life like it's never been changed before. Hey, I am so glad that you tuned in to this podcast. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need Him to do. If you need a prayer request or if you have a prayer request, send it in. I want to agree with you according to God's Word. Get in contact with us on our social media pages. Get in contact with us through email. We want to hear from you. I want to say just there again, we've got a new video or a new uh, YouTube channel. It's not really new. It's always been there, but it's always just been an audio thing. But we've been doing videos once a week to recap what we're talking about in our podcast and 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 getting great results out of it people's watching it and 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 being strengthened by it so so go to our website get in touch with us watch those videos help us to to get the word out now i want to take just a minute and thank all the partners partners thank you for all that you do i pray mark 10 29 and 30 over you a hundredfold return on everything that you've sown into this ministry. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about being part of what we're doing, and that is convincing the world that we serve a good God. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.